The human mind can trick us into doing and thinking some crazy things. It can create relationships that don't exist and convince us that somebody's wronged us when they wanted nothing to do with us to begin with. This deception can lead to a downward spiral that has unfortunately caused the demise of many victims. Today, we'll talk about an unfortunate case and the failure to protect somebody in obvious danger. Let's talk about the stalking of Tatiana Tarasov. Prosenjit Podar grew up in India, belonging to the low caste known as the Untouchables. While his social life wasn't all that developed, having little to no interaction with Europeans or Americans, he was considered academically gifted and was able to advance to the top of the Indian university system by 1967. At that time, he was seeking a degree in electronics and naval architecture which brought him to the University of California in Berkeley. In the fall of 1968, Prosenjit met Tatiana in a folk dancing class on campus. Tatiana herself came from a multicultural background and enjoyed spending time with foreign students, so his friendly nature put her at ease. They would dance and talk together, leading Prosenjit to believe that they were in a solid relationship. During that semester, Prosenjit even told his friend Farak Mistry that they were a couple, to which Mistry told him that he should be focusing more on his academic work and less on the girl. He described Prosenjit as socially and sexually naive, perhaps gleaming from the situation that Prosenjit was jumping to conclusions about the alleged relationship with Tatiana. What didn't help was that all the social interaction led the two to sharing a New Year's Eve kiss in an elevator before parting ways for the evening, a gesture that Prosenjit clung to and ran with. For someone who came from an isolated background with little to no experience with the opposite sex, it was easy to see how Prosenjit could confuse the kind gesture for a sign of legitimate relationships. However, upon bringing it up to Tatiana, she explained she was not in fact interested in an intimate relationship, which left Prosenjit confused. When he'd been stewing with the idea of having a girlfriend for so long, he couldn't fathom that it wasn't the truth. What about all these feelings he had? How does he deal with that now? Well, from the history on this channel, not well. Prosenjit began to obsess over the love that never was. He recorded roughly 40 hours of his conversations with Tatiana and would listen back to them all throughout the winter months to determine her true feelings for him. The unhealthy habit began a downward spiral until Brosenjit was having a full-on emotional crisis. Believing that Tatiana's friends were laughing at him behind his back and that even his own friend Farak was gaining joy out of watching him fail. He's quoted as saying, Even you, mystery, laugh at my state. But I'm an animal. I can do anything. I could kill her. If I killed her, what would you do? When mystery told him that he would tell on Prosenjit, he replied, Then I would have to kill you too. So, you know, he was handling it pretty well. The threats didn't end there. When Prosenjit returned to work, he told his co-workers that he was going to blow up Tatiana's house, or perhaps the entire block concerning behavior that was perhaps not even lost on the disturbed man. For the summer of 1969, he sought psychiatric help. While Tatiana was away to South America, Prosenjit saw a psychiatrist Dr. Stuart Gold about the situation. It didn't take long to diagnose the student with schizophrenia, paranoid type, and ordered a prescription of antipsychotic medication for him. Dr. Gold saw Prosenjit several times that summer, through which he witnessed the student shift from rational to psychotic episodes. Dr. Gold referred Prosenjit to psychologist Dr. Lawrence Moore, to which he explained a plan to end Tatiana's life, but this is where the system began to fail Tatiana. During the summer, Prosenjit became friends with Tatiana's brother Alex. He could appear rational when he wanted to, 
so the deception was thick in his plan and nobody suspected a thing. In October of 1969, Tatiana returned from her trip. Prosenjit had suddenly stopped seeing his doctors and informed his friend Mystery that he was going to buy a gun. Both doctors knew about his plan to, quote, get even with his lost girlfriend. And yet no one thought to tell Tatiana any of this. The campus police found out about the threats, but when confronting Prosenjit, he denied ever having a weapon and was let off. Even her brother was made aware of the threats, but because Prosenjit held himself so well in public, much like other serial killers, he shrugged off the threats as not dangerous. People were frustratingly lenient with this guy. On October 27th, Prosenjit was a man on a mission. He knew Tatiana was staying at her family home nearby, so he went over, racked with torment, in a mighty need to talk to her. He thought if he could just work out her rejection face to face, he could move past this obsession, but of course, it didn't progress as planned. Upon arrival at 8 a.m. after her father had left for work, he was met with her mother at the door who told him to go away. He returned home, but wasn't done. Equipping himself with a pellet gun and a knife, he headed back out to try again, later stating that the weapons were for self-defense against her father. He returned to her home, where he was met with Tatiana at the door. However, instead of the delusionally lovely resolution he was after, she told him again to go away. When he refused, a struggle between the two broke out, and Tatiana screamed, running from the house. Prosenjit could have just gone away, but instead, he shot the girl with the pellet gun and proceeded to stab her 14 times. He claimed he heard voices in his head that day, and they were not looking for peace. Further injustices would take place when the jury overturned his conviction due to unclear instructions. Tatiana's parents sued Moore and several other employees of the university. Prosenjit was released on the condition that he returned to India, and Tatiana never got justice for her death. This case was a frustrating mess, but from it, as always, comes adjustments to the law to make sure it's avoided in the future. In the case of Tarasov v. Regents of the University of California, the Supreme Court ruled that healthcare professionals not only have a duty to keep their patients safe, but also anyone threatened by that patient. It's an absolute tragedy that so many people failed to keep Tatiana safe, but her case has fortunately, kept others safe in the future. Thanks for watching. For more true crime and horror, please consider subscribing. Game with me on Twitch, follow me on Twitter, and as always, be well. <laughs>